Graphic images, bold with high contrast and very visual commentary on today's society. At the College of Charleston's Halsey Gallery, the commanding works of Charleston native Shepard Ferry are paired with those of New York street dweller Anthony Dominguez. The exhibit is called Obey and Slay, Art from the Street. Is it advertising art, graphics, graffiti, or plain old vandalism? Just what is this thing called street art? I would say it's a fairly somewhat recent phenomenon um, in a sense, like in the 20th century, latter part of the 20th century, and um, was goes with sort of a bigger phenomenon of artists going outside the gallery system and sort of finding other ways to get art out and almost sort of to the people. When people see it, they kind of almost do a double take and think, you know, is this advertising something or what is this? It, it, it fits in the landscape, but then it also sticks out somewhat too because it's, you can't tell, you know, what's the product and, and there, there isn't one usually. There's more, it's more that there's some kind of message that the artist is putting out there. Shepard Ferry's Andre the Giant sticker campaign is a case in point. The giant icon seemed to, well, just appear on billboards, telephone poles, abandoned buildings, almost anywhere. Shepard Ferry's work is really um, based on this interesting sort of phenomenon that actually started somewhat, uh, he said, as a joke when he, when he made his first Andre the Giant sticker. But one evening a friend was staying over and he wanted to learn how to cut a stencil. So I looked through the newspaper to find an image and came across this ad for wrestling with Andre the Giant in it. Uh, Andre the Giant, um, who was a wrestler, very large man, was in the, the Princess Bride, the movie. And so that's how it started. And what happened from there was what I thought would be an inside joke for a couple weeks turned into something bigger because the stickers that I made that I put at the skate spots and in the clubs and on the stop signs started to generate a lot more interest than just the skateboarders who were sort of my culture. And I noticed that and thought, well, wow, that's interesting. If I put more out there, it'll probably generate more interest, and the more interest it generates, the more people talk about it, the more powerful it seems. So it's sort of a self-fulfilling thing, and uh, I was fascinated by that, so. And he continued to make these stickers over a period of about 10 years in thousands of variations, um, always having the image of Andre in some way, but uh, using all these other sort of pop culture, political references, uh, Again, always keeping that Andre image as part of it. Um, and Andre happens to be very memorable, and he has a good balance between being um, goofy looking, funny looking, but also a little bit scary looking. So he's walking that fine line, which I, I think is provocative. It's a worldwide phenomenon now, and this is not all uh, specifically by Shepard's hand, but he, he has a website where people can get access and order the stickers and the posters and then sort of become Shepard's uh, like sort of silent army out around the world posting these stickers up and they've shown up all over the place, um, all over the United States, uh, New York, LA, San Francisco, uh, they're all over Charleston. Um, Shepard's a native Charlestonian and so every time he comes back home, um, he does what he calls bombs the city and um, <laughs> covers a lot of, of, of area with the stickers and the posters. And then there are other people doing it too. It's really sort of a phenomenon that's almost really sort of outside and beyond his control at this point in some ways. According to the artist, the viewer must bring his or her own slant or bias to bear. It means what we want it to mean, based on what our experiences and preconceptions are. When people analyze it, they realize that it's, it's, stripped of, it's stripped of meaning other than process. It's all about process, and that it's, it's very reflexive. It's, it is what you think it is, and if you think, if you think that, uh, you know, for you it's, uh, it's something that symbolizes rebellion, um, that can work. You can wear. You can. You can embrace it in that way. Or if you think that it's just an ad for the posters that I make, then it's that too. But uh, 
I really enjoy that it's got a lot of, it's, it's very multifaceted. I, I feel like everything that, everything that I've tried to do with it is, um, been based on my experiences and all the things that I comment on are the same things I'm susceptible to. So if it looks like I'm criticizing something, it's probably because I've done it myself. And so it's not a, I'm not looking down on people that embrace it as, oh, they're, they're suckers for another advertising ploy. What I'm doing, even though I do have some products, it's more absurd, it's more Dada, and it's designed to just bring everything else in one's environment into question because when you have become numb to the assault of imagery, it takes something that you can't figure out to give you a fresh perspective. Also, why, why wouldn't it be considered art? Um, it, does, it skirts the line in one sense in that it's not, um, especially this whole sticker poster phenomenon, it's not in a gallery, it's not in a museum, it's not a precious piece of something that you hang on a wall or put on a pedestal, but it's a visual communication of an idea. Because it is illegal and so it's also about the control of public space and my feeling that not, uh, if you, you can place some, something in front of someone's eyes if you're willing to pay for the space and that usually means that you have a sales agenda and therefore can justify the expense with the revenue that will be generated by the future sales. So it's a cause and effect relationship, yet with something that someone just wants to put a poem on the street or a piece of art on the street, they'll, they'll be stopped and it'll be considered graffiti. And I'd like to bring that relationship into question as well with what I'm doing. So Shepard is sort of um, manipulating and using the, you know, uh, corporate consumer culture to make a living and to propagate its art.